This is part four of the Low Poly Well series, and in this video, we're finishing off the modeling process. Check the playlist in the description for previous videos. Okay, so the last thing to model then is the winch mechanism across the middle. You can see I've put this in sections again and their overlapping geometry. I'll go into the creation of the rope a little bit later on, but first have a go and see if you can create this winch mechanism. And I'll just give you a good look at that. And maybe the support struts here as well at the bottom. So pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so here's where we got up to last time. I'll just press the end to get rid of the side panel. And let's come to the side here with shift right click to move my 3D cursor, shift A to add, mesh, and then cylinder. Now we don't need that much detail. We can go down to six or even five vertices. I'll show you what five looks like to start with. And you can see if I scale this down, it gives it sort of a nice chunky wood look. It's possibly a little bit thin. It does depend on how close you're going to view the model from. So six might be a better option. So I'll delete that, shift A to add, mesh, and then cylinder, and I'll change that to six. I'll scale it right down. I'll press shift Z to not scale in the Z axis, and then I'll rotate it around the Y axis 90 degrees, come to front view and position it. Scale it up in the X to somewhere around about here. And let's go into edit mode and start playing around with how it looks. So a little bit of variation. I'll just go into X-ray mode, select the end. I've still got proportional edit on, so I'll just turn that off so I can adapt it a little bit more freely. And I think that's working. So I'll come back into object mode, move my 3D cursor again, shift A to add, and this time I'll add in a cube here, scale it down. Somewhere around here, scale in the X, and zoom in on that. If you want to zoom in on an object, you can press the period key on the numpad, and you can find that under the view menu as well, frame selected. I'll go into edit mode and just bring this down, G to grab in the Z, and let's position it. So back into object mode to position it. It's much better to do that because your object origin will move with the object. I need to move my middle bar, if I can select that, across just a little bit. So I'll select both of these. <laughs> I'm struggling to select them. G then Y, move those out a little bit. Let's come out of X-ray mode for that actually. G then Y. There we go, that's more in the middle. Select the end object now into edit mode. And with these end vertices here, I'm going to scale these in a little bit. So scale in the Y so they come in. And the top ones I'll scale out a bit. So scale in the Y to go out. So sort of a angled device like this. I'll make it a little bit more rounded. So a loop cut down the middle here and then scale in the Z. And we've got that sort of shape. It doesn't have to be exactly the same as mine, but anything like that will do. And then I'll do another cylinder just here. So shift A to add, mesh, and then cylinder. Doing this in object mode, of course. Six sides is great. Scale that right down. R, then Y, then 90. So rotate around the Y axis 90 degrees. Scale that up just a touch, and then scale in the X slightly so it comes out like so little bit further I think and then I'll edit this very slightly so a loop cut down the middle there a little bit of movement and let's scale this one up a little bit and just mess around with it slightly and that looks quite fun I think it's a little bit too short so I'll bring this down G then Z and then into edit mode for these and bring these down G then Z let's come back a bit and that looks about right now how about these struts at the bottom well I can copy one of these so I'll just press Shift D and then Z to bring that down. And let's reposition this. I'll turn off the mirror and you can just close it down to get rid of it. And I'll close down the lattice as well. So that's just removing those modifiers and you can see it's got rid of them. And then I can start editing this. So R, Y, 90. Not 90, it's 180 actually. R, Y, 180. And let's go to side view and just start editing it now in edit mode. So bring that up, bring this around like so, and we have sort of strut there, that's great. And then we want to duplicate this over to the other side. We can't mirror it because it will appear on this side, so I'll just duplicate it. I'll go to top view for this, shift D to duplicate, bring it across that way, and R180. The rotation is perpendicular to your camera, so that means it will rotate around the Z axis because we're in top view. And I just need to move that across into position. And we've got some nice support struts there. That's great. Okay, so hopefully you've gotten okay with that. And if you want to make any edits, then you might want to pause the video and catch up. 
Okay, so how do we do the rope? So I'll shift right click into that position. I just press Alt Z to go back into the solid mode so you can see what I'm doing. And I'll start off with a cylinder. So Shift A to add, mesh, and then cylinder. I'll give this a little bit more detail. So I'll go up to eight this time, just because a rope, we want to look nice and rounded, whereas a piece of wood can look a bit more chunky. I'll scale this down and just scale it into position. So scale Shift Z. So it's a little bit wider than the axle of my winch going across there. RY90. And let's just come around to the side view and move that in position. So it overlaps the other one and we want it just a little bit thicker around about there. That's great. Let's go to front view, might make it a little bit wider. So scale in the X and just give it a little bit of rotation so it matches up with the axle. Okay, so to turn it into a rope, it's nice and easy. You can do all sorts of spirals and stuff, but it really isn't necessary. You can get a rope looking thing just by going into edit mode and doing a few loop cuts. So probably about that many, I think. So I've got four extra loop cuts. I'll just press a period key to zoom in on that. And I want to go into edge mode now and select each of these. So that's shift alt left click and then control B to bevel those lines. I'm creating a bevel like this, but I'm going to use the wheel of my mouse to create an extra cut in there like so. So I want it fairly even around about there. We've got a bit of extra space at the end, but don't worry too much about that. And then I'll select each of the middle ones, which is a little hard to see now, but I think that's them and scale them all in. Now at the moment, I'm still on individual origins. That's why it's not scaling the X. It's taking the individual origins of each of these separate loops. If I have medium point on, then I can scale, but shift X to remove the X axis and scale them in like that. So you can do the same thing. That looks good. I think I want to take the edge loops here as well and bevel those. I'll just do two this time. So I'll use the wheel of my mouse to take that bevel down. And then we've got this rope looking thing here. It looks very uniform at the moment. So again, we can go into edit mode, select all and use that randomize option. So mesh, transform, randomize. That's a bit too much. So again, I'll change this to something like to 0 0.03 maybe, maybe a little bit more. This will depend on the size of your shape. This is five centimeters. However, I haven't actually applied the scale for this. So it's probably acting a little bit strangely. I'll show you what it will look like if I do apply the scale. I'll undo that, go into object mode, control A, to apply the scale and then do the randomize again. So into edit mode, mesh, transform, randomize. And you can see at point one, it's going a lot bigger. So that's 10 centimeters of movement there. So because I've applied the scale, it's actually a realistic 10 centimeters movement. So if I go 0 0.01 now, that's a bit better, maybe 0 0.02, possibly a bit too much. So 0 0.01 looks about right, I would say. I can go in and manually move some of these. So Alt Z, to go to X-ray view, maybe into vertex mode and just select some of these and move them about a bit. That's too much. That's a bit better, I think. And there we go, we've got a bit of randomness. Just wanna move some of these sideways as well like this. There we go. You can make it look angular by moving all these sideways and all these sideways. And you've got that look if you really want it. Okay, so that's great. All we need now is the rope coming down. And that again is fairly straightforward. I'll shift right click here, shift A to add, mesh, and then cylinder. Scale it down, shift Z. So it scales, but not including the Z axis. And G then Z to move that down there. Alt Z to come out of X-ray mode. Scale shift Z again, probably around about there. I think that looks about right. So that's a nice looking piece of rope there. Okay, so you might want to pause the video, catch it with me making the rope. So lastly, then we just need a floor and maybe a few stones around our well. So shift A to add, mesh, plane. Now to get that to be right in the center, we can press Alt G to remove any transforms. If I press N on my keyboard, that's removed any of the location transforms and put it right in the middle. And I can just scale that up now. My well isn't quite in the middle, but that doesn't matter. We can change that later on. I'll just scale my floor so it's nice and big like this. Let's put in some rocks now. So I'll just shift right click, shift A to add. And I'll add in maybe an icosphere. You could do this with a cube and cut it up a bit. There's lots of different ways, but an icosphere is fine. You can use the rock generator as well, but you can even use the mesh tool add-ons and have the rock generator, but that's probably overkill. An icosphere will be fine. It's quite detailed, so I can bring this down to one subdivision and then just scale it down a bit. 
bring it above the ground and go in, select all, mesh, transform, randomize. Oh, I forgot to set the scale. Not that it matters, we can go from here and just change the size of it. Then I can go in and just start adding some topology. I could even slide some of these vertices into each other. So if I select this one, for example, and press GG to slide it to the other one, I can distort the mesh like this. However, if you do that, you do need to realize that these are still two separate vertices. They might be right on top of each other, but they are two separate vertices. If I use this button here, there's an auto merge vertex option. I press that and then let's say I slide it away and slide it back again, GG. If I can slide it along the right line, let's try that again, GG, there we go. Now this is just one vertex. So I can slide some of these around the place to change the shape a little bit and maybe kind of smooth it out a little bit like this, make it a bit more rounded. And we've got ourselves a really nice looking rock there. <laughs> Looks a tiny bit pointy. And if you think it's too pointy, you can select one of these and control shift B to bevel and make it interesting like that. So I've got one rock there. I can shift D and maybe adapt this shape slightly. You don't have to too much though. It's surprising what you can get away with, with just one single rock and rotating it lots of different ways. But I'll edit this one very slightly, make it a little bit less, less pointy out there. Okay, so I've got two rocks. I'm just going to plonk them around the well slightly. So I'll go to top view for this and move this into position. Oh, I've got the floor selected as well there. So I'll undo that. Let's go to top view and try that again. G to grab. And in fact, let's turn snapping on. So snapping and turn it to face. I can then grab this and it should snap to the floor like so. Now, it's sitting right on top of the floor, which isn't great, but my object origin is right in the center of my rock, which might be better for that to snap onto the floor. If I change the snapping settings to center, I can then press G to grab and the center will sit on the floor like that. And that looks a bit better, I think. So I'll again, go to top view, G to grab, move that one, scale this one down, shift D, let's move that there, rotate it around a bit. I'll just reposition some of these. A nice group of rocks there, lovely. I'll go to side view now and rotate it this way. And rotate it this way. It's a bit spiky this one, so I'll bring that back in. Oh, I've got snapping on. So if you want to turn snapping off, just press G to grab and then control and you can move it normally. A little bit easier without snapping on. So I'll create just a few more in different places. I really don't like this particular sticky out bit here, but they're just about working. Okay, so we've got a few stones there. That's fine, that's all we need. Okay, so I think we're looking good and we're ready for the texturing. So as always, catch up with me and save your work ready for next time. And remember to check the playlist in the description for the next videos.